Hello viewers, it's Super GT here. Welcome to this week's final of the Forza RC. So this is the EMEA region, so Europe, Middle East and Africa. Qualified in the top 24, you might have seen the video on my channel where I got through in the semi-finals. This is the final, three races in the video, up against some top names, you've seen them already. Uh, Kaiser Wolf, uh, the likes of Azix are in there as well. Mr. Jack Johnson, some top guys we are up, uh, up against. So there I am, 10th on the grid. I'm going to be 10th in all three races. Bam Azix, 11th, finished second in the New York Invitational. So some top drivers even behind me as well. And here we go then. It's the start of the first race at Spa, driving the Penske uh, P-Class car. Porsche, of course. Into the first turn. Can 12 top-level drivers keep it clean? Looks like they can. Through the last source hairpin. We're through there, okay. But coming down the hill, three abreast up ahead. And it's not going to end well for the two guys on the right-hand side. So they're out. Or, well, they're going to be damaged. And they're coming through uh, Eau Rouge. Well, bang. Absolute pure death. Absolutely killed Melish. Let's take another look at that. Because that was absolute abuse. So I come over the brow of the hill. It just gets spat out, basically. Right into my path. Nothing I could do. He did. So I've got damage. I've got a lot of damage. I missed Jack on my right-hand side here. And we're just going to make awkward contact. As we go into the Lekoum chicane. And I think he's just going to let me go there. I was going to let him go, but okay. Whatever. We're going to let each other go. And then trying to get myself around the chicane into the pits. We have to pit for that damage. In ninth place, we're a long way off eighth. There's no chance. And they're coming out of the pits. Uh, just taking a look behind there. Mr. Jack is going to be our main battle for this race. And then as we go to lap seven of seven, this is the situation. He is right on my tail. As we come through Blanchimont into the final chicane. I'm going to go semi-defensive here. Uh, I, I think I hit my mark fairly well there, late if anything, and he went a little bit too late around the outside, almost clipping the back of me, but just about avoiding contact. I come through in eighth, oh, sorry, ninth position over the line. Should give me two points. Uh, so a fairly okay race after the collision. I mean, I, I held off Mr. Jack there, but I got a 10 second penalty. Really honestly, not sure why. I, it must have been for track extending somewhere. But I don't recall doing that that much. If it was for that contact with Melish, then I give up completely. Anyway, race two, Lime Rock, West Chicane, in the GT3 RS. So we're going from a P-Class race car into a road-going car now this time. So definitely different prospect in store. Going up three positions already. I think Melish got a poor start. Vida did as well. And then that was Shelby behind, just getting a little bit late on the brakes into turn one. So I'm up into 7th place, game 3 already, that's, that's a decent start. Kaiser Wolf ahead of us, he finished 5th overall in the New York Invitational. So again, top level drivers in and amongst us here as we come up the rise at Lime Rock. Now this is where the chicane is, we're not going to turn right immediately here, we're going to go a little bit further on and go around this awkward long right hander into the left. And then, well, a bit of a um, concertina effect here as we're going into the back of each other. I thought um, Paps was going to come across there, across Kaiserwolf, so I just got on the brakes a little bit. And it's going to lose me two positions, or one position for now. But Azix is alongside, so I'm just going to cover him off as we go into the first turn. Just go for the long, uh, wrong braking marker, though. So I've braked maybe 10 metres too early. That's going to give Azix the, uh, the inside line now. And he just about managed to filter in ahead. So I go back down to ninth. Melish on my right-hand side here. And I'm very narrow through the corner. Just open up the throttle on the exit to get ahead of him. And I've reclaimed ninth position. So, not the best uh, end of the first lap there and start of lap two. Could have been a little bit better. I was in seventh, gone back down to ninth. Still in the points though. So points go down to tenth. One point for tenth, two points for ninth. Um, so I only got one point in the previous race. So definitely going to try and get a few more. Now that corner there... That little left-hand kink at uh, the chicane. Definitely causing a little bit of, well, some issues there. There's some drivers not wanting to cut or go, or go over the concrete, basically. But if you go over the concrete, 
as long as you have two wheels on the concrete, it's a clean lap. Um, it kind of depends how they're marshalling it though. If you do have four wheels beyond the white line, you could be penalised. Uh, that is that is a grey area really. So I think most people were just going for fours of clean lines, which is what I was opting to do. As long as you keep two wheels on the concrete, then you're okay. Azix here, I, I don't think he was quite sure whether to go over that concrete or not because uh, I don't think he practiced as much as the other guys. So he's doing well here, I think, because he's not. I don't think he's really practiced at, at all. But anyway, uh, still in ninth. Just putting pressure on Azix as much as I can. It's really hard to overtake, I can tell you that. When everyone's just nailing their braking points, it's almost impossible. You can't just send a lunge up the inside because you're just going to go flying off. It's absolutely impossible, really, unless you're already alongside as you go into the corner. You can't really just go for a lunge out of nowhere. I mean, this kind of distance here, 50 to 100 feet, there's just no chance from that far back. This is lap number five then. So I think we're just going to look behind here and see that Melish. Yeah, I mean, there's no one behind me now, almost. Well, there are three drivers, but they're long gone. I think they made a couple of mistakes. And this is lap number six. AMS Roadrunner up ahead. I think he's running sim steering and this just causes him a little bit of an issue there. As he goes um, sim twitching into the wall. Loses a couple of positions. I think he was about fourth or fifth. And he's gone down to ninth. So lost to four or five positions there. So that I think um, will be um, a, about as good as I can get really here. Because we're trying to chase our Nazix. But trying our absolute hardest. But not really getting any inroads on him. You can keep up with him at best, but you see they're losing maybe a couple of attempts on the curb of the exit of the final turn. So this is lap number 11 now. Not quite as, uh, as consistent as I'd like to be. You see they're just grazing the grass as we go into the chicane. That's going to lose me some momentum on the way through there. And as you can see there, Azix, just opening up that gap, I've got really little chance of catching up with him now. So I think the best chance... Uh, we have of getting a decent result here is just is to stay in eighth place. So uh, Roadrunner trying to reel us in, and he is doing so. Uh, we only have a couple of laps left though. It's a 15 lap race, so I think these um, races are decent length. We're looking usually between 15 and 20 minutes, which I think is very it, it is a decent length of race. When it's below below let's say seven or eight minutes, I think it's a little bit too short, and the uh, the starts become. Uh, too frantic as a result because everyone's trying to do everything at the start whereas in these races you can afford to be a little bit more patient so you can see here Roadrunner now definitely on my tail um, I can see that proximity arrow coming up brighter orange so he's definitely right on me now putting the pressure on so I have three uh, laps left to try and keep him at bay as we come through the final turn getting a decent run I know that I can do it if I just nail my breaking points so one lap later Coming through the final turn. See they're getting a little bit wide. I go off throttle for half a second there. Bring it back on. The car wants to do a wheelie. And I lose so much momentum. It absolutely ruined my life. Coming to turn one a little bit early on the brakes maybe. I was just trying to play it safe more than anything. I think if I had gone a little bit deeper. I might have actually forced him off the road. So just pushing him as wide as possible. But I can't really push him any more than that. And he's up the inside then. For the left of two and three. So he is through back into 8th position and I've gone back down into ninth. So it's just a, pretty much a one and a half lap shootout now. See if I can get that position back, force him into a, a mistake. That's about as good as I can get now. So coming through the right hander of uphill, as it's conveniently called. And then into the west chicane. You can see there Roadrunner just grazing the grass as well onto the entrance of the chicane. He's going to get a poor run therefore on the exit. And I'm alongside nearly on the left hand side as we go into the final turn. He's on the accelerator fairly early though. And I'm not quite going to get a run. I'm going to tip, uh, tuck into the slipstream as best I can. Let's see if that can have any effect. Not quite. I think the, the, the straight here, the Sampo's is straight. A little bit too short for me. He's just going to cover me off. He just lets off the gas ever so slightly to bring his car around that corner a bit better. To cover me off, make sure there's no gaps. And there's nothing I can do really. He's just uh, driving a very nice defensive race. This is all he can do really, finishing eighth position. His seventh place is gone. That's all he can do. So at the end of the race, finishing ninth position behind Roadrunner. So again, I mean, I'm just pleased to be in the final. I'm in the top 12 of Europe, essentially, for the races. I mean, I'm not obviously, I'm not the 12th best player in, the, in Europe, but um, against some of the best players, even just not finishing last is a decent achievement. 
There were the results, and there are the total points so far. So I'm in 10th with three points. I think Ivor Biggin, we could catch up with him and get into 9th potentially. At this final race at the Bernie's Apps, we saw this track and car combination last week in the semi-finals. So I'm fairly familiar, or we should be fairly familiar with this. Starting 10th once again, that is my qualifying grid slot for these three final races. Around the outside of Vida. Now Vida is the one we made contact with in last week's semi-final, which gave us a lot of damage. So that really ruined my race last time. So let's see what is going to happen this time around. Azik's there, just cover him off before this turn, but then he's going to get the inside line. And he's actually using Attacks Johnson's livery there for some weird reason. Anyway, coming down the hill into this far sweeping left hand. I'm up the inside in, well, a lovely uh, judge move there. Back up into 10th place. And then Melish just ahead is very close indeed. Now, Azik's just going to go for a lunge. Makes contact with uh, Melish. I don't know if he got uh, damage from that. And then up ahead, a couple of guys go very slowly. And I was not sure which way to go. And I actually spin myself out. So I was going to initially go to the left-hand side there. But then at the last second, whoever that was just turned to the left. I mean, they didn't do anything wrong. But I just had to go to the right and then I just messed up completely. So that has not gone well at all. I've been behind us. He's the guy we need to beat, really. But I do need to get a few more points than just one or two. So I am in need of getting into about 7th or 8th position. We're going to move to lap number 4 then. This is about as good a chance as I've got of getting better positions. So that is a Roadrunner there with some damage. And uh, Vida just ahead. So that is FCT Diesel, I think. Yep, going into the bit lane. So uh, gaining another position as a result of damage. Now coming back up to Vida, I believe he had damage. He was a lot slower than I would have expected. Now coming through the final turn then, going to get a late apex. And then the fateful moment. The tiniest of taps in the world. And it's given me damage again. Yes. Exactly the same as last week. The same person, same track, same car. And I've got exactly the same kind of damage from a tiny hit. I guess I should have learnt my lesson. But when you're racing this close, you, you sometimes you're just going to make tiny little taps of contact and hope that it doesn't do anything. But around Bernie's apps it does. Oh well, into the first turn on lap number 7. Just three laps left. He goes very deep indeed. Gives me a chance on the exit, but he's just going to square off the corner. Just cut me off. We make contact again. And uh, luckily, I don't get any damage that time around. Lap number 8 now. So... Just over a lap remaining. Now through this turn, he's not going to get the best of exit. Go a little bit wide. I'm, going to, I'm just going to send out the inside. Go for a lunge, sliding sideways through the apex. And then on the exit, nicely on the power, over the curb. And we're just going to maintain track position now. I think at this point here, we've both got pretty much the same damage. I think going um, around a couple of laps behind him, our cars were behaving very um, similarly. Uh, we had... Um, very very under uh, oversteery cars going into the turns and it was actually fairly hard to control the car with that damage so i think we are actually on a level playing field at the moment uh, the, the two of us here so it's actually a fairly decent race i guess between us not where we want to be fighting for eighth position we want to be a, high, a bit higher up ideally but let's see what we can do then just uh, half a lap left to go as we come round the left hand and just going down the hill couldn't quite get the gas on as early as i'd like so just going to go defensive going downhill into the left hander. He makes contact, the fateful contact around Bernie's app. You just don't do it. Just don't do it, guys. Don't do it, kids. If you're out there and you ever want to race around Bernie's apps with simulation damage, just totally avoid the other guys like a plague. Don't touch anyone at all. So we've got a couple of corners remaining in this race. And Vida is running out of opportunities to get past. I think I heard contact there. Ivor Biggin has been catching us up this whole race. So he was in last initially. I think he may have damage as well. I wasn't quite sure. Final turn then. Sliding through the entry. And I, I can see that proximity arrow come flying up in orange. Not a good sign. It's always bad when you see the orange one. I'm just about going to hold him off. And we are going to cross the line in 8th position. So, I mean, after that contact on lap 1. I mean, 8th place is fairly decent i went down to 11th and there are the results of that race eighth place four points finishing behind azix there in seventh attacks johnson with another victory and he won overall as you can see mr jack in second uh, i finished 11th overall 
only seven points on the board there. I think that crash at Spa really ruined it for me because I think if I had not crashed there, I would have finished seventh at worst, but probably sixth. Uh, yeah, it would have been that sixth place I long for, but uh, that is the one that went away from me. But anyway, I think I'm pretty sure I've qualified for the Le Mans finals. So that is all that matters really. And uh, I do hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. So plenty of Le Mans content will hopefully be coming your way when that uh, event comes around in June uh, 17th and 18th. So do subscribe if you are new. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. As always, goodbye. Thank you.